Yeah. Man, it's crazy when your family turn to enemies. Man, it's crazy how these moments turn to memories. All right, everybody, Trinidad and Tobago and the world over. This is Andy of HipHopTT.com. I'm here with the one and only Devin, young Devin to be specific. Baby go. Rap, rap legend in the making, you know. So we wanted to talk to Devin for a long while, chop it up, have a little interview. So we're here for that today. How are you feeling, young Devin? I'm good. I'm good. I just woke up. Um, I was in the studio all night. Um, even working really hard, so I'm good. All right, all right. So you, so you actually was in the studio, so you're recording music and that kind of thing. You have a I studio almost every day now. Okay, okay, okay. That's good to know. Um, so I want to start from the beginning, right? Um, well, as far back as we could, right? So I am. Um, I've seen a lot of you from you know, your past endeavors in terms of music, right? Um, but the thing is, I see you repping Trinidad a lot in all these music videos and in interviews and things like that. I have to ask, were you born in Trinidad? Mm -mm. I was born in Brooklyn. I mean, well, I was born in um, New York, but I grew up in Brooklyn, but every year I would come back to Trinidad. So it's like Trinidad is like a second home. It's basically like half and half. Okay, okay, okay. So you're born in, in 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 the U.S., but basically you've been to to Trinidad ever since. Yeah, yeah. So so you feel so you feel almost just like any other Trini. Yeah. <laughs> basically, yeah. right? All right. I think that comes through a lot because I was always um interested in how, how see how hard you rep Trinidad, you know. And I was always wondering if it was that you used to be here, you were born here, that kind of thing. So I guess that clears that up. All right. So also. Um, from those days, I see you used to do a lot of soca music, right? Yeah. I saw I saw a lot of music videos, you know, that you had um, that were actually shot in Trinidad. I saw you did a song with Lyrical. I saw you on stage with Marshall. Maybe you could tell me a little bit about that time in your life and what that was like for you. Um. Yeah, well, so before I was rapping, um, I was doing soca. Well, first off, like, I never had any... Um, ambitions to like be an artist like when I grow up like when I was younger I always used to say I want to be like the first president the first female president of America like I never had ambition to do music um, I just came from a very musical household nobody took music serious or did it professionally but you know just my mom could sing my dad could sing um, my aunts um, they could sing as well and you know just them you know being pastors of church it's like I grew up listening to a choir all day um, my mom and my whole family being from the Caribbean, I grew up obviously listening to Calypso and soca music. And I just kind of fe fell into it. My school had a talent show and it was called International Day. So, you know, I was very well-rounded of my culture, like I said, because I was always in Trinidad. And so basically we had to rap a song from our culture. So I did a song called uh, Work It by Patrice Roberts. And um, like I tore down the entire talent show like the video went viral on Facebook before like viral viral was like really a thing this was like in 2010 and then um it's like it was, it was kind of been like word of mouth you know what I'm saying just people were booking me for shows here and there and it kind of just became my life so I grew or grew into this you know soca artist or just artist you know lifestyle in general and um yeah, so it was never a conscious decision. I ended up uh, doing pretty good in soca music, traveling, going on tour at like 11, 12, performing in stadiums. I posted on my Instagram too. A lot of people was like, oh my God, that was you? Like you were that kid? Because um, at the time, it wasn't really that many kids doing soca music. It was just they were either singing Kaiso or that was it. I was really the only kid um, doing soca. So it was like, you would see me on a bill. It would be like Patrice Roberts, Masha Montano, Fama Nappy, Lyrical, then Little Devin. You know what I'm saying? But my call time is at like two in the morning, you know? And like, it was just really, it was kind of like some, like looking back on it, it was kind of like some rock star stuff because I'm eight years old and in Antigua performing at like three in the morning. But, you know, the crowd is loving it, but it was nothing ever um, inappropriate. I always remained my age and that's what people loved about me and about my artistry. Um, so I did pretty well in soca music and then rapping is just something that came naturally. Um, I never 
I never had dreams of being an artist, but I never in a million years thought I would be a rapper. Like that was probably like the last thing in my brain. Um, I was watching a, a Nicki Minaj documentary. It was called My Time Again. And it was just showing her behind the scenes at the VMAs and her prepping for the award show, her prepping for her album. And at the time I had to be like, like 13, 14. And um, I had just got myself a computer because my mother at the time, we couldn't afford to go to the studio all the time. So I started teaching myself how to record and I used to record um, songs in my closet. And, you know, like the, a week prior, I was crying to my mother because I wanted to go to the studio so bad, but we couldn't afford it. And then there was a piece in a documentary where she was crying because she wanted to go to the studio, but she was too busy. And like, I related to her for some reason because it was like, it was two completely opposite dynamics, but it was for the same love and the same passion. And so that drew me to her, but I still never took rapping serious. I just always was drawn to her and I would listen to her albums over and over again. And then at like 15, 16, that's when I was like, maybe I should try taking this rapping thing serious and see what happened. And so that's how it happened. All right, that's cool. I, I actually, I'm glad that you went into the, the, the transition to hip hop because that's actually what I was going to ask you about after. So, I, know, I mean, that's good. And it's it's always, to me, sometimes the most talented people I've seen in any kind of genre, whether it be sports or um, music or whatever, sometimes a lot of them, when they do tell you their story, sometimes it's, it's something that they just fell into. Sometimes you see somebody so good at something and you think, yeah, you was born for this and this was obviously something that you wanted to do all the time, you know, but it's, it's always, it's always interesting to hear someone's story and then you realize that eh, sometimes it's a lot more simple than that, <laughs> you know, yeah. so that, that, that's a cool story. Um, so, well, we are at the point where you're actually rapping now, right? Now, tell me about the exposure that you started to get from hip hop because um, I first heard about you when you blew up on social media, right? There was a, like a Facebook um, video that was going around that had mad views, you know, where you were, you were freestyling. You know, so tell me how, tell me what that was like for you, you know, going from, you know, just doing your own thing with soca and thing, whatnot, and then transition into rap, and then all of a sudden everybody knew you as a rapper. Mm-hmm. It was pretty, it was pretty weird. Um, It was cool, though. It was like, soca is not really that mainstream. I always said I would go into a different genre. Like, if you look back at my all, all my old interviews, I always used to say I was going to be the one to kind of like bring Soka to the forefront, bring it to the mainstream world. Because I feel like I'm young and because I was born in America, but I have Caribbean roots, but I don't just have the roots. Like I'm actually in Trinidad. I know the culture, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I feel like, you know, it's my job to be able to have, have that balance and bring it to the forefront. Like you see, like somebody with the influence like Rihanna, like she sings pop and R&B, but she's so well endowed in her culture. Like no Bayesian could really ever turn it back against Rihanna. Like Rihanna's in crop over every year. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's kind of how I look at it for the Caribbean thing, but out, but in like a bigger spectrum, like I want to be the one to bring Soka mainstream. So I always used to say, yeah, I'm going to transition into like pop or R&B or something. And then when I get big enough, I'll show the world what Soka music is. Like I said, rapping, it was an accident. But going back to your question, I just feel like, you know, when it came to the rapping thing, it was weird. Because like I said, Soka is not mainstream. So like I had like three thousand followers, but like in a soca world, if you're bubbling and you popping, that's 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 pretty good at the time because yeah. this was before like, really the social media wave now where you see soca artists verified and you know yeah, like yeah. you know thousands of followers. This was way before that. So like three thousand followers is like like your Masha, like you know what I'm saying? And then to go from three thousand followers to ten thousand in like two months and then watch that ten thousand turn into sixty thousand and watch those little ten thousand views turn into a million views from like a, a switch of a genre it was we it was like really weird to me you know it would be like i would get recognized in the street before you know one or two times a week now it's like if i go to the mall like i know what i'm setting myself up for you know so it would be like i started posting Freestyle Fridays on my Instagram. That's how I first started getting my fans to notice that I was rapping. But even at that time, I wasn't taking, I didn't take rapping serious until I went viral. Cause that's when I seen like the same video that you seen of me that went viral. That's the conscious effort where I was like, you know what? All right, like 
maybe I have something here, you know? Okay. Um, but I was doing little freestyle videos every Friday. And, you know, I was just having fun with it. And then one Friday, I didn't post a video. And, like, a bunch of people was commenting, like, where's your video? And that's when I realized, like, wow, like, people are paying attention to me. And, um... Like I said, I just started doing the videos. Then I started just being known for my little Freestyle Fridays. Then that platform called Bars on I-95, they called me up and they were like, yo, we want you to come to Connecticut and freestyle. I did the freestyle. Brooklyn, Trinidad, uh. Listen. My teachers even doubted me, saying I wouldn't be here. Went from making ramen, my lobster is all I eat here. Tried to run my race, but it's something you can't compete here. Every time they sub in the mask form, to be clear. On the road to the riches, we never mess with ops. We the told you snitching, never folding or flipping. Selling souls for the goal we be digging. Always aiming for your top, like I'm holding a sniff and just wait. You ever see your dreams knocking at your doorsteps? And they he called it too he was like this is gonna go viral like this is something that goes viral i'm like you know like i haven't really went viral so i never i don't really know how to gauge that like how i do now like i'm like all right you know i just looked at it as another freestyle show right and they posted it on facebook and posted it on instagram you know i was really calm at first and then i go on facebook the next day and i see myself just scrolling on my timeline i'm like that's me and it yeah. had like hundred thousand views Later that night, when I came back home, it was at like half a million views. Right. Then after that, two days later, it's at a million. Then by the end of the week, it's at three million. Rappers are hitting me up, uh, labels. And I'm just like, whoa, that's that's really weird. And then at that point, I was like, yeah, I think I should take you know this thing pretty serious. So it's almost like the, the soca aspect of things, um, it was all a kind of happy accident and you were kind of along for the ride. But it seems like as you transition to the hip hop, you start to get more calculated, and um, you. Yeah. Because then I realized, cause cause soca, it was more so about you know the vibe, catching that traction, rapping. I noticed it had a lot to do with the internet and numbers. Then I started teaching myself how this social media thing really works, and so then I started gauging how I would be able to go viral on my own, and I wait for that moment again, cause who know when that one million view moment will come again. So it was like. You know what? Now I know kind of what to do and how to do it. And you know, it wasn't easy. I had to teach myself over the time. But then boom, like I had uh, started doing more raps on Instagram. Then boom, MTV calls me. They're like, we want you to come to TRL. I go to TRL. I rapped. But who's the host? Sway. You know, he's his show is really iconic for Sway in the morning. And I pulled him to the side because it was two singers and one rapper. I was the one rapper. And right. so it's kind of like I stuck out to him. And I was like, Sway, like, I really would love to come to your show. I, all my favorite artists have been there, you know? And he was like, I got you. But you know, this is the industry. So I don't really take people yeah. saying that too serious. You know, I've been in it since I was eight. So I kind of experienced that yeah. disappointment already. So I don't really take it serious. And so he was like, I got you. A month later, I'm on Sway in the morning. Fakes. When I pull up, watch the look on their face. I move quick, I bounce back, take a look on the tapes. Couple lions in my struggle, we be cooking the snakes. So much stars are in my vision, like I looked in a wraith. They hate to say I'm getting. I rap. Uh, that day, my followers start shooting up. But then, even then, like I had like 15,000 followers. Then they after you drop the uh, the video on YouTube, and then. Boom, a week later, Taraji P. Henson posts right. me on her Instagram, like randomly. I'm go on my way to school and I literally get out of the car and my mom calls me and she's screaming. She's like, Devin, I'm thinking she crashed her car because she literally just dropped me to school. I'm right. thinking she crashed her car or something. And she's like, Taraji, I'm like, Taraji, what? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not thinking she posted me. She's an actress. Like, that's the farthest thing from my head. Oh, yeah. I was already following her. Boom, I open my phone, I go on Instagram, who do I see? Me. And then that's when my followers like shot up overnight. I went from like 15K to like 30,000 followers in an hour. Like, so that's kind of like when I started really realizing like, okay, like this viral thing, you just gotta know how to do it. You gotta know how to set it up. I mean, at the end of the day, you don't know who's watching, but you know, it's, it's, it's a game that you could play for your numbers to really be where it needs to be. All right. You know what my next question was going to be? How did you end up on Sway in the morning? <laughs> yeah. And the thing about Sway, like, I will always be thankful for Sway because, like, number one, not only is he um, a legend in the game, 
but he was kind of like the first guy in the industry to embrace me, not really know too much about me, but still, you know, be open to putting me on his platform and just, you know, being behind me after that full throttle. Like after I went on screen in the morning, they have this thing called Doomsday Cypher where they bring the top, you know, 10 best freestyles. Mm -hmm. yes. And, you know, I knew that I was going to be on the cypher the, the day that we literally turned off the camera from that interview because he told me, he was like, you're being in doomsday. Like, I don't care who comes here after. I don't care what it is. You have to be there. And he's just always been behind me. Um, just things behind the scenes that people don't even see. Like, Sway is really genuinely happy for me, wants to see the best for me. He talks to me all the time. And I will always be, always, always, always owe everything to Sway. So... Okay, that that's really cool. I um I I looked at that interview honestly, not gonna lie, about ten times, you know. And I always um I always love to see the moment when um they pan the camera to your mom and she's crying, <laughs> you know, she's crying. And um it was a it, it was a very emotional moment, but it was it was so cool as a Trinidadian to see somebody up there on sway in the morning, you know, repping Trinidad hard and you know like. It, and, and that person wasn't there just because of um, like Soka or whatever the case may be. This person was there. I'm happy, I don't I don't think we have a good representation. And it's no diss to Nikki or Cardi, what I'm about to say. I just feel like we don't have a good representation of Trinidadian artists. Like you see, like when you see Stefan Don, yeah, she's from the UK, but she rep Jamaica hard. Like when you think of Stefan Don, you think of Jamaica. You know what I'm saying? When you when you even when you look at Drake now, like you people some some people or some of Drake's pops fans his white fans think he's jamaican just because it's like you always see in the mainstream genre somebody trying to be jamaican that's why Bajans go so hard for rihanna because it's like she's bajian and she doesn't care you know what i'm saying so it's like i don't feel like we have that person in the forefront who really reps trinidad like how people be repping jamaica so i just want to be that person to kind of wave that flag and it's like like i said once again it's just a strategic thing when you start seeing something a lot it's like you naturally start, you know, adapting to it. So it's like, you're going to see from me a Trinidad flag a lot and wonder why is this kid always repping Trinidad? But then you slowly going to start hearing Soka on the radio. You're going to slowly yeah. start seeing Soka on TV and you're going to realize like, oh, this was a whole plan from the beginning, you know? Yeah. I, trust me, I love that. And it's the... um. It's the most exciting part of seeing you out there doing what you do. I mean, the talent, I mean, the talent, you know, it's, it goes without saying, but the, um, to, to see that talent and to see that person rep Trinidad that hard is something that makes me very proud as a Trinidadian, but also very proud as a Trinidadian who's into hip hop because I never really, I used to go crazy whenever I hear like Trinidad mentioned in a hip hop song, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like you you barely even hear that. Like when you hear that you be like, What? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So to see somebody on Sway in the morning, you know, with a waving a Trinidadian flag and, and proudly saying, Yeah, I'm Trinidadian, you know, that's a good thing. So, you know, keep that up. Now, um so I wanna shift gears a little bit and um so I mean you're young, right? And um I'm a tad bit older, right? So I've um I've been listening to hip hop uh, for a very long time, and I've I've I actually started listening to artists that came up in the '80s, and that was my introduction into hip hop, right? And um, I was uh, I was introduced to hip hop with Run DMC, and even and like even like Tupac early work, you know, I was I was super into that before things kind of transitioned into the the '90s music, right? Now the thing is, is that my question to you is given your age and the 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 type of hip-hop music that you were surrounded with growing up because I, I i'm guessing that some of that would have influenced you right i never grew up on hip-hop like that like really okay hip-hop is something that i had to discover on my own like don't get me wrong like you know like i said i'm from brooklyn so of course i'm gonna hear it on the radio but like my mother wasn't blasting hip-hop in her radio it was just soca and so it was like that's why like the the love that i felt have for rap it's so genuine because i feel like it's something that i just discovered like for myself you know yeah. like i just I, like i said i wasn't listening to old school rappers like i had to study the game and that's how i fell in love with jay-z and lauren hill and dmx and that's it was how like 
Correct. Yeah, it was like it was just me doing that, and that's why you know, no matter like I said, how hard I go for soca, it's like the love that I have for rap is so genuine because it's like something that I seeked for myself. You know what I'm saying? All right. Okay. Okay. That's cool. So um, I want to ask you a question about your process with making music, right? So. Yeah. And I know some people have spoken to different artists and they have different methods. Some people, they hear melodies, right? And then they start putting words to those melodies. And I know some people who, they hear lyrics, you know? And then, then the melody comes later, you know? They, they, they might hear a whole story in their head before they know what, what's the melody that, that's going to flow and, put, and string it all together. What, what is your process and, and how does music come to you? Um, well it's like many different things like before i used to only be able to like write songs in the middle of the night like four to four in the morning to like six in the morning that was like really like my prime time but you know as i developed as an artist you know i've taught myself to be able to write you know at any time but um i definitely hear flows and melodies first i usually once i catch a good flow then i'll be able to build lyrics around it um when it comes to like song structures, I usually are, I'm able, even though like a chorus is the easiest thing, like that takes me the longest because it's like in my verses, I really rap. So when it's time for a chorus to be fun, I just have to dumb it down. But sometimes it's really hard for me to have to tell myself, all right, Devin, let's, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, that's basically how I do it. I catch a flow first and a melody first, or I would hear a beat and I would really like it and I would just start writing to it. You know, I try not to really overthink it. Um, even if the beat is a really good beat, if I'm not hearing anything, I'll go to something else, come back later with fresh ears. So I just try not to overthink the process. Okay, okay. That's cool. All right, so in terms of um, other passions that you have, because I mean, obviously music, right? But what what else would you say that you're passionate about? I guess I could phrase that question as, if you wasn't um, being an artist right now, what do you think you would have been doing? I would be a billionaire. I don't know how I was gonna do it, but I would be a billionaire. Like I've always felt like my calling was bigger than music, you know? Right. Like even to this day, I feel like music is not like my final destination. Like I feel like music is a gift that God gave me to be able to take me to the next step of whatever he has planned out for me. Um, but I just always felt like my calling was higher than music. I'm a, I'm a really spiritual child. Like. Um, like my relationship with God, I have a very close bond with God. Um, and it's just like, even when I would dream certain things, it was just, I know that my calling is, is bigger than that. But in a realistic situation, I still feel like I would be like a billionaire or something. Cause like me, I look at, even though it, music is a passion for me, I also want to be able to use this to like set up my family. Like change my whole last name's fate you know what i'm saying like i want generational wealth this is not something where i want to be famous i want to be known you know feed my family around me and that's it like i want my grandkids to be able to walk into these corporations where there's like white ceos but their last name is what is carrying them because of the hard work that i put down like i know i'm not gonna see all the fruits of my labor like i'm not gonna be alive to see what the potential of this groundwork that I'm putting in now is really going to equate to being, but like, I definitely want generational wealth for my family. Like, you know, when you look at like the Nose Carters or when you hear Rockefellers, you know what I'm saying? Like them last names alone, like you put that stamp behind them because of how official they are. I kind of want that to be for my family as well and just break that generational curse. Ah, that That's very impressive to hear you speak like that at your age. And um, I think that definitely, the, the mere fact you already have that mindset, I ain't worried about you. You're definitely going to achieve the things that you're looking for. Um, so I was going to ask, I don't know, I, I can still ask this. Do you do you have any plans to go in to, to try acting? Um, yeah, I used to, I used to actually act. Um, I used to do like little auditions. That's how I ended up. I used, I was on Sesame Street at one point. I wasn't like a main actress, but I was, yeah, I was on Sesame. It had like 40 million views on YouTube. It's, I gotta it's, find that. Yeah, me, find Janelle that. Monae. Um, then I, I used to do like commercials and stuff, but I was really signed to a talent agency. It's called Take Three Talent. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to get back into acting. Um, like when I get more known or whatever, I feel like that would be dope to like do a movie or something. Like I'm never against it. Anything that has to do with just like the media or being in front of the camera, like I feel like it's really dope. Right, right, right. All right, that's cool. All right, so we're looking to wrong things off. Um, 
I remember I was telling you at the beginning of the interview that I was going to ask you some questions and you'll tell me which one you choose out of yeah. the two, right? So, we're starting. Tupac or Biggie? I'm from the East, so I gotta say Biggie. Biggie. You know, because the New York connection, like... Yeah, it's like, you, you can't be from New York and sit here and say Tupac, like that's... You know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me wrong, Tupac is a legend. Everybody knows that. But, like, just being from New York, I automatically got to pick Biggie. Right, though. Okay, I tried to set you up there with that one. I know you're going to pick Biggie. I know what you want to set me up with next. <laughs> Nikki or Cardi? I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Um, but You said I can't say both. <laughs> can't say both. I don't want to pass because it's like, it's like, I love Cardi. I love Nikki. Like, you know, the only reason I'm, like, I'm going to say Nikki, even though I'm a big fan of Cardi B, everybody knows that. Everybody know I go hard for Cardi. I listen to all her music. But, you know, Nikki is, like, the reason why I started rapping. Like, that would be crazy if I was, like, this is literally, she's literally the person who inspired me to be a rapper. So if we just talk about, like, inspiration level, obviously Nikki. But, you know, I bump Cardi on my phone all the time. And then Nikki is Trini, too, so. Yeah, I, well, Cardi, Cardi Trini, too, are her. Yeah, yeah, I think one of her parents is um is yeah. from Trinidad, right? Um, mm-hmm. y- okay, so one, uh, two more. Um, Marshall or Bungie? Marshall. Marshall? That was easy. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Like, uh, but I, just, I answered that off of, off of relationship-wise. Like, a lot of the soca artists, um, because I grew, like, they've seen me grow up, like, I have genuine relationships with these artists. Some are closer than others. Like, I have, like, a really close relationship with, like, lyrical, you know what I'm saying? He took me to prom. Um, and he just helped out my life so much. He's really like a second dad to me. Like nobody really knows. Cause you know, that's not something I have to, I don't think I have to, or we have to publicize, but that's really like, like my dad, you know what I'm saying? Um, my shell's like the same way. People used to make rumors that my shell was my dad. Cause he would always bring me out on stage and stuff. Um, so yeah, I have a, even though Bungie, he's super dope, super humble. And when he sees me, he always embraces me. But you know, I just have a closer relationship with my shell. Okay, cool. So, one last question. So, old school hip hop or new school hip hop? Take old school any day. You know what I'm saying? I, I like, you know, I'm 17. Of course, I listen to the new school hip hop, but like when it comes to something that like I could really sit down and enjoy all day and not get tired of, old school hip hop any day. All right, all right, good. Well, all right, Devin, this was, um, this was a wonderful discussion. Thank right. you. Thank um, you for having me. This was fun. All right, so we're bought in in about half an hour, so I think that we could um, probably wrap it up there. This was a dope interview we just had with Devin, young Devin, right? And um, it's been a long time that we wanted to have this conversation with Devin, and it was great. I hope all the fans that tuned in right now enjoyed it too. And Devin, it was great. I really enjoyed speaking to you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Shout out to all my fans in Trinidad and shout out to HipHopTT.com for really highlighting the Trinidadian culture, but the hip hop culture that's in Trinidad. You know, a lot of people think Trinidad is just for Soka, but it's so much more aspects. So Hip Hop TT is doing a really good job at that showing the versatility of the island. So I'm definitely a number one supporter. And thank you guys. Thanks a lot for the love, Devin. I'll see you again on the flip side. Don't worry, we'll be doing a lot of things together in the future. Peace.